In this screencast, our goal is to review what a memory potential is and why it's important, the difference between a memory potential and a resting memory potential, and why the memory potential changes in excitable cells. The memory potential plays a vital role in a number of physiological processes, such as electrical signaling, for example, in neurons and muscles, and the secretion of neurocrines and hormones, for example, the secretion of insulin by beta cells of the pancreas, or acetylcholine by alpha motor neurons of the somatic nervous system. All cells have a memory potential. Only excitable cells, for example, neurons, muscles, and some endocrine cells, use changes in their memory potential for signaling purposes. So for example, to cause skeletal muscles to contract and move, for the heart to beat, for the lungs to bring oxygen into the body and to expel carbon dioxide, and for the digestive system to move food through peristalsis. But what is a memory potential? The memory potential, abbreviated as a capital V per voltage with a subscript M for membrane, is a measure of the potential energy due to the separation of charges along the membrane. Whenever positive and negative charges are separated from one another, as is the case here, it creates a voltage. These charges come from ions that are present in both the intracellular fluid and the extracellular fluid and are separated from one another by the cell membrane. There are two characteristics of the lipid bilayer that are important to the membrane potential. The first is that the lipid bilayer is impermeable to polar molecules. Ions, although small, are charged and consequently polar. And thus the lipid bilayer is impermeable to ions and they cannot cross the membrane unassisted. To allow ions to cross the membrane, cells have ion channels. The second characteristic of the lipid bilayer is that it's also very thin, about five to seven nanometers in thickness. This characteristic is important because it means that oppositely charged ions can attract each other across the thin membrane. So what we see here is that a charge separation or a voltage exists across the cell membrane because oppositely charged ions can attract each other across the thin cell membrane. This charge separation is only right at the membrane where the oppositely charged ions are close enough to attract one another. It's also important to keep in mind that this charge separation only represents a very small percentage of the total number of ions inside and outside the cell. For example, for a typical neuron, the charge separation represents only about 0.0005% or 1 200,000th of the total number of ions present in the cell. The bulk of the intracellular fluid and the extracellular fluid is electroneutral, with the positively and negatively charged ions balancing each other out. With just a thin cloud of positively charged ions on the outside and negatively charged ions on the inside surfaces of the membrane. So this is a good time for a concept check question. After I give you the question, go ahead and hit the pause button to pause the video until you're ready to see the answer. So here's your question. Would the memory potential in these two cells differ? Note that the bulk charges inside and outside the cell are not depicted in these images to simplify the image. So here are some answer options to choose from. No, the memory potential would be the same in both cells. Yes, the memory potential would be greater in the cell on the left. Or yes, the memory potential would be greater in the cell on the right. So go ahead and hit the pause button now until you're ready to see the answer. And the answer is yes, the memory potential would be greater in the cell on the left. This is because more charge separation means a larger potential difference and a larger memory potential. So on the cell on the left, we have 12 pairs of charges being separated from one another across the membrane. Whereas in the cell on the right, we have only eight pairs of charges being separated from one another across the membrane.
This means, therefore, that the cell on the left has more charge separation and consequently a larger memory potential. The memory potential can be recorded, for instance, by sticking a recording electrode into the cell and observing the difference in the voltage between the inside and the outside of the cell. The memory potential is reported as a difference between the inside and relative to the outside, with the outside arbitrarily being assigned the value of zero. Typically, the memory potential is negative inside with respect to the outside. For example, in neurons, the memory potential typically ranges from about minus 60 millivolts to minus 70 millivolts. And in muscle cells, the memory potential is typically around minus 90 millivolts to minus 100 millivolts. So let's go ahead and do another concept check question. Again, go ahead and hit the pause button to pause the video until you're ready to see the answers. So here's your question. Which of the following values represents the largest potential difference across a nerve cell membrane? Zero millivolts, minus 65 millivolts, minus 75 millivolts, plus 20 millivolts, or plus 50 millivolts. So again, hit the pause button until you're ready to hear the answer. The answer is minus 75 millivolts. Why? The number indicates the magnitude of charge being separated across the surface of the membrane. That is, the amount of electrical potential difference or voltage while the sign simply indicates whether the inside surface is more negative relative to the outside or more positive relative to the outside. So the next question we want to consider is how does this charge separation arise? We'll talk a lot more about this in lecture, but basically the charge separation arises from two factors. The first factor is differences in the distribution of ion species in the intracellular and extracellular fluids. Recall that ion species are not equally distributed in the intracellular fluid and the extracellular fluid. Sodium and chloride are more concentrated in the extracellular fluid, whereas potassium is more concentrated in the intracellular fluid. As we'll talk about in lecture, these concentration or chemical gradients are important in determining the memory potential of cells. The second factor is the selective permeability of the cell membrane which regulates what can pass. Although ions can't cross the lipid bilayer because they're polar, the presence of leakage channels in the cell membrane allows some flow of ions, which is important for establishing the membrane potential, as we'll discuss more in lecture. Now, excitable cells are special because they can alter their memory potential for signaling purposes. In these cells, therefore, the memory potential can change. It thus becomes important to differentiate between the resting memory potential, abbreviated with a capital V and a subscript rest, which is defined as the memory potential when an excitable cell is not signaling, compared to the memory potential, again, abbreviated with a capital V sub M, which is a more general term used to indicate the voltage difference across the membrane at any time. The last point that we want to consider is how does the memory potential change? Recall that there's two basic types of ion channels in the membrane, leakage channels and gated channels. Leakage channels spend most of their time open, allowing ions to move back and forth across the membrane without regulation. Under certain conditions, these may close, but typically they are open. Gated channels, on the other hand, spend most of their time in a closed state they open and close in response to specific stimuli, which allows these channels to regulate ion flow across the membrane. Ion flow through gated channels produces changes in the memory potential. It's important to note that ion flow changes the charge separation along the membrane, not the bulk ionic concentrations. When ions flow, if they cause the memory potential to become more positive, or conversely, less negative, we say that the cell has depolarized, or that a depolarization has occurred. If the ion flow causes the memory potential to become more negative, or conversely, less positive, we say that the cell is hyperpolarized, 
or has undergone a hyperpolarization. That concludes this screencast on the memory potential. If you have any remaining questions, please bring them to recitation or to office hours.